Portions of today's game are being brought to you by the Ohio Lottery and by Dairymans. All your dairy best from Dairymans. Well, in central Michigan, the temperature 44 degrees, partly cloudy skies, the wind from the northwest at 15 miles an hour, and there is a very slight chance of rain, and maybe we can get through this game without any precipitation, Jim. Kenny Stucker, the sensational freshman kicker to boot it. Young man out of Miami of Florida will send it deep. Back deep, it's Maurice Brandon, Darnell Rush, and that man, Billy Smith, taking it at his 5 for Central Michigan. Nearly broke it, but he's finally brought down at the 25, where we'll take a look at the offense for the Chippewas of Central Michigan. Led by Jeff Bender, their quarterback. He's third in passing efficiency in the MAC, although he hasn't thrown a heck of a lot. Donnie Riley, one of the top backs in the Mid-American Conference. Joe Conley's had a great season at fullback. Not only can he block, but he can run. Eric Reed, the MVP from last season. And Chuck Pellegrini, one of the stars on the offensive line. He can really knock him down. First and 10 for Central Michigan. They open up on their own 25, and Bender's going to throw it. Looking downfield, he has Eric Reed out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Andre Barnett on the coverage, but it's a first down for Central Michigan. A way, a way to start out your offense. You know, a team known for running the ball throws its first pass on the very first play. Great, pen, a great zone coverage, but he just got inside the zone on that, uh, Jim. And a great play call to start off the game by Central Michigan. Eric Reed this season has had another fine season. A couple of touchdowns already. John Hood not starting this game. Uh, he has a knee injury. Hood has been uh, injured all season long. Knee, ankle, hamstring. He's not been very healthy, so John Hood is doubtful. He may see some action. Central Michigan after the first down on their own 47. Donnie Riley almost to the 45 of Ball State. Greg Shackelford on the tackle, and there's something that we usually don't see from a Ball State team. They usually make good tackles inside, and there they didn't. Mose Carter outstanding at the nose guard, perhaps first team all MAC there. Ralph Wise has come on for Steve Paris, has been sensational. There you see Garnica, last year Defensive Player of the Year in the MAC, and the other gentleman on the inside, Tim Walton, he is really a hitter. Great combination at the linebacker slot. Second and three for Central Michigan. Bender dropped the ball, but got the handoff to Riley, who's shy of the first down by almost a yard and a half. Jess Neal, the right cornerback, a senior out of Yorktown, Indiana, in on the stop. And Tim Welton also uh, helped out. Should be an interesting matchup, Jim, between the nose guard, Mose Carter, and the center, Ralph Newland. Boy, I'll tell you, he's got his hands full because Mose Carter can really penetrate the line of scrimmage. He is an outstanding defensive lineman in the MAC. Third and call it about one. They have to get across the 43 of Ball State. Riley has the first down. As Greg Garnica knocked it down, well, we got a penalty marker down that came late. I think there was a face mask on that one. Uh, well, they had him stopped, and somebody probably got their hand in up around the face, and it's going to cost Ball State some yardage. They are not happy about this one as we watch it again. Just gets enough for the first down. They stand them up here, and the uh, face mask comes in right at the last second. It wasn't, wasn't that obvious, but he got his hand up there. you got to keep your hands away from the face mask, and it's going to cost them some yardage. Now we'll check out the call. Face pass, defense, first down. So the second first down now for Central Michigan. We should point out the field's in excellent shape. It has been uh, sunny this morning, or partly cloudy, if you will. Yesterday it rained all day long, and this is relatively new artificial turf. Came in in 1983. As you see, Central Michigan, Greg, has really dominated this series. Yeah, they won eight straight before last year, and uh, that was one in the mud at uh, Muncie, Indiana by Ball State. First and 10 for Central Michigan at the Ball State 31. Bender 
to Donnie Riley. Riley's short gain on the play. Donnie is number eight in the MAC in all-purpose yardage at 108 yards a game, and he's number one in rushing in the MAC in terms of the single best game this year. He had 243 yards. Well, they're just loaded at the tailback position, uh, Jim. They can throw a lot of people out there, and again, even with John Hood out of the game, for now, uh, Donnie Riley can really pick it up. Averaging six yards a carry, and Riley will go in motion. Second and seven. Ball at the ball, State 28. And went right through the hands of Riley, who says, what hit me? Now, Riley knew he should have had that one. It's very interesting to note on the, on the very first play of the game, Central Michigan threw a pass. And I think it, what, it, what it told Ball State is, hey, we can pass the ball when we want to. We're going to pick our spots. You know, when we were here the last time, Jim, the game against uh, Kent State, Central Michigan really picked its spots where to throw the ball and when to throw the ball. They did a great job of it. Second, third down situation in this drive. Spot the ball at the Ball State 28. That's Billy Smith. And he gets crunched by Tim Walton, the senior out of Detroit. Yeah, Walton came up with the tackle, but most harder almost made the tackle in the backfield. He had good penetration, and it just eluded him, but they could have gone for a big loss. Watch it here as Carter gets into the backfield, but he goes around in, gets shoved to the outside and out of bounds. That brings up a fourth and seven. And the offense is staying on the field. So we will not see Kevin Nickel. Ken Ely split wide to the right. Eric Reed out at the bottom of your picture. And Jeff Bender wants a timeout to talk it over. So Central will take their first timeout of the game. 12 minutes, 16 seconds to play first quarter. Central Michigan with a fourth and eight coming back when we return. So Herb Duramity has made the decision to go for it. Fourth and about eight. The ball at the ball, State 29 after a loss of one on that third down play. They split Ely now to the wide side. Bender, I don't think we're sure who was where. Looking down the middle, stop Herb and hang on. And so, on the change of possession, it'll go over to Ball State as they stop what could have been a big play for Central Michigan. Now well, that was a great pass. Well, it wasn't a great pass because he had his man open. He just overthrew him by about two feet, but a great effort, a tremendous effort. And unfortunately, uh, Central Michigan could not connect on that. Eric Stockford's only caught two balls all season. He was an unlikely target there, as it'll be first and 10 now for Ball State, led by David Riley, the number five passer in the nation. See, Herb Jackson is back after knee surgery. Eugene Riley, a great tight end. Big hands, but he had two fumbles last week. And Ted Ashford anchors that line at center. Here is Parmalee, and he is knocked down in the backfield by Duran Robertson, the strong safety, the senior, out of Detroit. Big loss on the play. Yeah, he's their most experienced player on defense, Jim, and Duran Robertson is the kind of guy that comes up with the big plays, made one there. Getting back to the situation here where Parmalee and Stevens are starting, Parmalee and Stevens are interchangeable. Here's Al Ferenc, who Greg talked about in the open. Two good outside linebackers and Dennis and Allen. Robertson, who you just saw make the tackle. And interesting, all four members of the starting secondary, Strong, Robertson, Johnson, Williams, have two interceptions each. Riley, the handoff to Bernie Parmalee. And Parmalee gets up to about the 33-yard line as the free safety, David Johnson, is in on the tackle. Between Mark Stevens and Bernie Parmalee, Ball State has rushed for 1,000 yards. 
Parmalee, uh, he can really break it. Very elusive runner, and perhaps uh, they're going to use him because of this AstroTurf uh, situation here, Jim. David Riley just had a great season. Every time he comes in, he just makes something happen. A year of experience has done him wonders. He's also started two games previously against Central Michigan. Riley to throw it. And he threw it to Adam Wilson, but he appears to be shy by a yard on the first down as Mark Mead was in on the coverage. Well, there's a situation where they just didn't run the route far enough to get to the first down. Watch it here again. It was a good route, but again, he needed to go two yards deeper. Instead, he's going to be very close to the first down, and I don't think he got it. Interesting, when they come out of the shotgun grade, they'll use Parmalee and Wilson, and not Stevens in the backfield. And of course, that gives you a lot of up top speed. I think he's shy by about a yard. That close, says the referee. About 26 inches <laughs> shorter than he got. Yeah, it was close. He just, again, uh, Jimmy, you, you, you kind of allude that situation if you just run the route a little deeper, and I don't think he knew where the uh, first yard, first down yard marker was. You saw Paul Schudel, the former offensive line coach under Bo Schembechler at Michigan. This is his first head coaching job. Donnie Mullins is back to punt. This might be the one area of weakness for Ball State as we do have a little swirling wind out there. And back deep, get up, get up. Oh, Kevin get up. Floyd in single safety for Central Michigan. Standing back and around his own 15. Snaps a little high. Ball has lots of time and really hits a high one. Floyd, as we do have a fly down in the backfield where the kick took place. Floyd brought down at the 32-yard line. But remember, there is a penalty marker. Back where Mullins punted away. Could well, be a rough kicker. The, you know, they had roughing the kicker, Jim. And that will give uh, Ball State a first down. That is a costly penalty. That is a very costly penalty to Central Michigan as we watch it again. There's the roughing. Looked like Rickham Strick got him. Yep. He was blocked initially, got away from the block, and then I think just couldn't hold up and rough the punter. Excuse me, it was Tim. Antonides, who roughed him. Roughing the kicker on the defense. First down. Each team with one penalty, and each penalty is resulted in a first down. So Ball State gets a reprieve and will have the ball just across the Central Michigan 47. 10-28 to play here in the first quarter. Be interesting to see if they might throw a pass in this situation. Riley is not lined up as a tight end. He's a slot back. But instead, it is Parmalee up to about the 43-yard line. Craig Allen, the outside linebacker, a senior, made the stop. Well, you know, Ball State can run the ball well. It's a little uh, curious why they haven't thrown a pass yet because they have the wind advantage. They're not going to throw a dying quail at this point. So yeah, you got to figure that somewhere down the line here, probably in the next couple of plays, you're going to see Riley throw the ball. Like you said, with the wind at your back, this is the time to do it. Second and six from the Central 43. Here's Parmalee. Hesitated, cutting back the other way. He's got a lane. It's a fourth place Parmalee to the 10. Reverse fields, found the wall of blockers and hit it towards the end zone. Watch it here again as it goes left. Sees it really jammed up there. Knows he can't go anyplace. So he says, why not go the other way? As he goes the other way, the tacklers get tied up. He gets three or four blockers. He heads toward the end zone. And Ken Strong saves today, at least for the moment, for Central Michigan. Gain of 42 yards, first and goal ball. State at the Central one. Sean Jones in motion. Parmalee. Touchdown, Ball State. Here's the touchdown again. Just a simple dive play over the pile and just 
just got over the line, of the uh, goal line for the touchdown. Broke the plane, got himself six. Stucker, Kenny Stuckers had a great year. And what a year indeed. Number one of the Mac in scoring. Number 12 in the nation in scoring overall. Tied for first at over two field goals a game, and he puts it through. And so Ball State strikes after Parmalee reversed his field, set up his own touchdown. With nine minutes, 33 seconds left, the visitors go on top, 7-0. All right, David Riley just turned and said, here, Bertie Parmley, do it yourself. And watch him do this. Now, the flow of the action was to the far side of the field, Jim, and all he did was see that it, it was no place to go and ran the other way. Meanwhile, Kenny Stucker sends it deep, and Darnell Rush drops the ball at the two. Looking for a lane. Dives up the middle, but he's shy of the 20-yard line. Now let's check in with John Lachance. All right, Jim, while the key to that play, Parmley goes to one side, you're right, this flow was stopped to reverse his field. Duran Robertson, the strong safety on the other side of the field, should have been staying home to safeguard that. He was on the sidelines with a dislocated finger. He should be back in later, and you may note that is the first point since the first game of the season scored on Central Michigan in the first quarter. Yeah, I believe that advantage, John, has been like 28-2 to two this season in first quarter scoring central to their opponents. So here come the Chippewas from their own 19, first and 10. Donnie Riley to the outside. And once again, Greg Garnica came over in pursuit along with free safety David Hall, a junior out of North Judson, Indiana. Again, you're right, great pursuit by the defense. And again, we talk about the linebackers and the defensive line. They go for the ball, they, they don't get hung up. And that was a great defensive play by Ball State. Herb Duramity watching with some anxiousness here. His club down 7-0 already. Something they are not used to this whole season. Bender to roll. Fires. Incomplete. He went for Ely. And the coverage was by Todd Fennell, but it was beyond the reach of Ely. And so that'll bring up a third and seven. Ely ran a simple out route was underneath the coverage. Good pass, would have completed it, but he just threw it a little over his head. Bender, 37 of 69. In fact, you have to go back to the Kentucky game is the last time Central Michigan trailed in a ball game. Bender, looking for Reed, couldn't hang on. Again, on those two passes, just off the hands, Charles Kelly and David Hall were in coverage. If Reed could have gotten it, it was a first down. Instead, it'll be a punt for Central Michigan. Yeah, good pressure on the quarterback. But, but beyond that, both times, both receivers were open. He's open right here. Underneath the coverage, a good pass, and it's a first down. Todd Winters to punt, averaging 34.8 per kick. Back deep is Todd Fennell for Ball State. He has all day. Didn't get off a good kick at all. It takes a bad bounce for Central Michigan out at their own 43-yard line at Ball State has great field position again with 8.33 remaining here in the first quarter. Well, Todd Winters is having some problems and he's had problems all year. He's averaging a little over 34 yards per kick. And again, there was a situation where Central Michigan was backed up deep in their own territory and they're punting against the win. He didn't get a good punt off and now Ball State has great field position. It's a good point, right into the teeth of that win. Just coming at least 20, 25 miles an hour. First and 10 Ball State, David Riley to throw. He has Herb Jackson, scoots out of bounds at the 35, shy of the first down by about a yard and a half. Jackson's had an outstanding season, although he missed a few weeks because of knee surgery. 10 catches, 136 yards. Now he went out right after the first game. Blue Blazer. Five, five. He split to the near side of the field. Sean Jones is one on one to the left for the moment. David Riley, quick toss, it's intercepted. Batted down and picked off by Greg Allen. First turnover of the ball game, and Central really needed that. 
and that is the first interception Rowley has thrown since the second game of the season against Bowling Green. Well, Craig Allen really gets in here. He's been known for his penetration. There he gets the penetration, intercepts it, and boy, oh boy, what a turnover for Central Michigan here, Jim. And that's the first interception by someone other than a secondary person by Central Michigan this season. Their ninth interception overall. First and 10 now Central at their own 42 after the turnover. Whistle before the play started. I think there was some movement on the line of scrimmage there. Yeah, they still had nine seconds on the 25 second clock. Dead ball, a little procedure. Second, first off. Second penalty now on Central Michigan, two for 20 overall. Well, I'll tell you, that turnover really hurt Ball State, Jim, because there was an opportunity to put some more points on the board. They had tremendous field position, and they end up giving the ball back to Central. So make it first, as you see, and 15, and they'll move the ball back to the Central 37. Chip was 3-0, and there's more movement again. Someone on the right side decided to get a little jumpy. Dead ball. A little procedure. Offense. Speaking of the officials, let's take a look at them. Referee is David Whitboat. James Schott is the umpire. Norman Eubank, the linesman. William Klenshek is the line judge. Louis Coretta is the field judge. And Robert Moran is the back judge. First and 20. Now the ball's back to the central 32. Bender on the blitz. Tossed it right over the middle to Joe Connolly. We have a late flag down at the 40. And it'll probably be another face mask on Ball State. Tim Walton in on the tackle. They beat the blitz. They covered it well, but somebody got the hand into the helmet again, and it's going to cost Ball State some yardage here. Watch it here. Beats the blitz, the penetration, the pressure from the outside. Good running, there it is, there it is. Tim Walton just got his hands up into the face and it's gonna cost him another 10 yards. Face mask, defense, first down. Ah, two penalties for 30 yards against Ball State. We've had five penalties in the game so far. You know what, Craig, I know these are two talented defensive teams, but as far as I'm concerned, I think they could put about 20 points each on the board today. Well, at least it seems right now, Jim, defensively, they're uh, they're just not going in full cycle right now. Central Michigan first and 10 at the Ball State 43. Donnie Riley somehow kept his feet after Tim Walton belted him. Tim Walton really stuck him, but you're right. He just kind of bounced off that stick and gained about two yards after the initial hit by Walton. Great season for Donnie Riley, including four touchdowns, averaging 102 yards a game. As we mentioned, it's 19th in the nation overall. In fact, today you have four of the top 10 rushers in the Mid-American Conference. Bender, throwing, Stockford's open, got it. And he's down at the 19 of Ball State, first and 10 for the chip was David Hall on the stop. Well, I think the wind helped the pass, Jim. He's looking, he's looking here. Now he cranks it up and he throws it. That ball was ready to go over his head. I think the wind caught it and brought the ball back. That was a wind-aided pass and it helped Central Michigan on that one. Make that Mark Hopkins on the catch, Mark Hopkins. There you see the Chippewa stats, including today's action. Here's Donnie Riley, trying to sneak to the outside. Greg Shackelford was in on the stop out of Hubert Heights, Ohio, a senior. And we have an injured Ball State player. Mose Carter, the nose guard, part of that Bermuda Triangle of Walton Garnica and Carter. They're called the Bermuda Triangle because they swallow up running backs and quarterbacks. They kind of disappear when they get around them. Well, there's a guy you cannot afford to lose in Mose Carter because you know, as we pointed out at the beginning of the show, he anchors the defense. 
clock stops with we'd like six to tell you that this, I'm sorry, we'd like to tell you that this broadcast is presented by the authority of the Mid-American Conference and Master Video Productions Incorporated. It's intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or any other use of the telecast without the prior written consent of the Mid-American Conference and Master Video Incorporated is strictly prohibited. Does that mean I go to jail if I do it? No, John LaChance visits you. Oh, that's even worse. And so Carter is down at the moment, and look at that. That's my personal hairstylist who worked on that one. <laughs> you know what that looks like? Remember John Riggins used to play for the Redskins? Right, the Jets? right. Carter is on his feet, and that's a good sign for Ball State. More looks a little shaken up. At least he's walking on his own. So that puts John Banks into the lineup. Also, don't forget they have Steve Paris back, who was a starting tackle, who's missed a lot of action. And Ralph Wise did a good job at this spot. And they will bring in Banks, the senior out of Gary, Indiana, in his spot. Second and seven, Bender hits to Riley, cuts to the inside. Still on his feet. Amazing as he's down to the two of the first down as Charles Kelly and Tim Walton saved a touchdown. How do you get that guy down? And another Ball State Cardinal is down, speaking of that. Well, I'll tell you, bad tackling on the part of Ball State. It's not how do you get that guy down. You get, the, you get it down. Watch it here. Breaks to the inside. Three tackles. Gets off of that tackle, and oh, man. You just got to knock that guy down. He should have had uh, five, six less yards. Eric Reed, the MVP, had the big block on that particular play, and Riley, though, made a lot of yardage on his own. Yeah, the big block, but again, poor tackling on Ball State's part. Mose Carter is coming back to the lineup. That's good news, but I'm not sure which Cardinal is down. We'll check it here for you. Jess Neal is down. Well, fortunately for Ball State, that's one area they do have some depth, Greg, in that that's secondary. Right they played a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. Remember Mike Cruz played at free safety that's for a right. couple weeks? Now they're banging in there. And it's, again, good to see Mose Carter back because he anchors that defense. Again, uh, I'm just kind of amazed here in the early part of this game, Jim. We've just seen poor tackling on the part of Ball State, and that's what that defense has been noted for. Well, last week was the kind of game that Ball State could just kick themselves about. They had had only five turnovers going into last week's game with Eastern Michigan, and they had four. Two on center snaps between the center and the quarterback. Eugene Riley fumbled a couple, and the worst part of all is they gave Eastern the ball on the Ball State 7. That was the game winner. Frustrating loss. First loss of the entire season for Ball State, including the match. Now it's first and goal from the three. Central Michigan. Riley. Maybe to the two. Garnica was sneaky in there. So was Charles Kelly, a couple other guys. But somehow Riley keeps his feet. Herb Duramity now calling for the next play. It'll be an interesting play call at this point. <laughs> They have a lot of room to the near side, Jim. Second and goal from the two. Riley, not much of anything there. Greg Shackelford, the senior again, the left end, was right there, and that'll bring a third and goal up. I'm looking at all this room to the near side, and you got to wonder why they haven't come this way. The last down would have been a good play to try it. I would think Bender might roll to the near side on an option. From the two. Maurice Brennan is slammed. Greg Shackelford just nailed him in the backfield, and that'll bring on the field goal unit. Tim Walton also in on there. Tim Walton made a great stick on the play. And I... <laughs> I question the play calling when you're that close, Jim, and you got a lot of territory to play with. Here it is again, watch. Tim Walton. It's Kevin Nickel kicks the field goal from the 10, so about a 20-yard field goal, which would have been normally an extra point, but 
Central Michigan a little disappointed as they can only come up with three and they trail 7-3, 4.29 remaining. All right, so Ball State still leading with a great defensive stand after Central Michigan got down to the two. Kevin Nickel will kick off as we have 4.29 remaining here in the first quarter. And back deep will be Sean Jones and Bernie Parmalee. You know, Jim, on those last plays, uh, Central Michigan ran right into the heart and the strength of uh, Ball State's defense. That's why I didn't understand the play calling. Low kick. And it's fielded by one of the up men. And it's Paul Fowler returning the ball in good field position. Now let's just send it down to John LaChance. All right, so you see most Carter checked back into the ball game. He has a slightly strained right knee. He's fine, but you know, if anybody's ever had an injury like that, you know it could, it could tend to stiffen up later in the ball game. So let's, watch, let's keep a watch eye, watchful eye on that. Thank you, John. First and 10 now, Ball State at their own 33. For a first down to the 45-yard line of Ball State, David Johnson, the free safety, made the stop. That unofficially is the third first down for Ball State to four for Central Michigan. As there you see the story on how the scoring went. Let me tell you about the offensive line play of Ball State, Jim. They are making some big holes for Bernie Parmalee. First and 10 for the Ball State Cardinals at their own 45. Make the Parmalee Riley in trouble throws. It is caught by Eugene Riley. And he picked up about seven on the play. George Rickamstrick, one of the outstanding inside linebackers in the back on the tackle. Eugene Riley, number one, as you see in the MAC in pass receiving. One touchdown on the season he is the junior, Richard Jr. out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Second down, all about four from the Central 49. Parmalee to the outside. And Ken Strong met him head on. And George Rickenstrick came from behind also on that play. Now Ken Strong smelled run and held his position there, and Rickenstrick came up to help with the tackle. Here's Parmalee again going one way to the inside, goes back outside again, and again, good pursuit, and again, Central Michigan not over-pursuing the play. Under three minutes to play here in the first quarter. Ball stayed ahead 7-3. Third and call at two from the Central 48. It's close. I think he might have it by the nose of the football. Depends on the spot. Well, he should have it. And they is, they're giving it first down. For their first third down conversion of the day. Scott Alperink in on the tackle. Last year, a second team all MAC pick. Let's check in with John LaChance. All right, Parmel, you're always looking for that cutback so he can open to the, uh, run to the open side of the field. All the more important that the CMU linebackers have got to stay home and protect their home turf. Riley to roll on first down, and it was almost picked up by Duran Robertson, intended for Sean Jones. Stops the clock with 2.12 to play in the first quarter. That's a tough pass to complete there, Jim, because you're, you're going against the grain, and you got to really make that pass almost perfect. Just threw it over his head just slightly, and behind him was a tough catch. Mark Stevens checks into the lineup. Number four in the MAC in rushing, number 24 in the nation. Ball stayed at the central 45 with Sean Jones in motion. Stevens, flag in the pile ahead of Stevens. It's usually where holding is. He's up to the 40-yard line. Yeah, it's going to be holding on Ball State, so that's going to push the ball back 10 yards. If so, that would be the third penalty for 40 yards, and it is. So far in the first quarter, each team with three penalties. Paul Shadell, 
Must be a little cold down there. We're in the stocking cap today. <laughs> I know it's a little cold down there, Jim. I didn't think it was that cold. What happens when it snows? Evans. There's the most winning active coach in the MAC currently, Herb Duramity. Eight and two. Offense. Second down. Eight and two lifetime against Ball State. Chanel is one and two, having won that game last year in Muncie, 13 to three. You know, Herb from the distance with that hat on and the heads, it looks like a Bo Schembechler. Just down the pike a little ways. Just a little bit. Coach Dunderbow at Michigan. Under two minutes to play, first quarter. Shotgun now at the Ball State 47. That's Herb Jackson. He's very elusive, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Duran Robertson, again, the strong safety in on the stop. Herb Jackson got underneath the coverage and was looking for some room to break away from the pursuit of the tackle, but just couldn't get away. Good, good coverage by Central Michigan. You know, Duran Robertson's in there, Jim, but he has a dislocated finger. It's been wrapped heavily, but he's still in there. He's quite a gamer. Gino Marchetti has just come into the defensive secondary on the right side. Third and 10, the central 45, rally to throw. It is caught. Sean Jones at the central 30. First down, Ken Strong in coverage for the Chippewas of Central Michigan. That pass was thrown before Sean Jones even looked for the ball. Watch it here. He moves. That ball is right in the air right now. Comes back to the ball for the first down. Great pass. Great timing play. It was good coverage, Jim, but uh, the pass was thrown on a timing play. And give credit to Ball State. That's why David Riley is number one in pass efficiency. Sean Jones in motion, fifth first down now for Ball State as they start at 30. And they went to Bernie Parmalee, Craig Allen, the outside linebacker, making the stop for Central Michigan. Make that Mark Stevens, excuse me. We should point out, Stevens, it's really interesting. You'll see it about half the time Stevens, half the time Parmalee, but you will see Parmalee and Adam Wilson, the other tailback in the shotgun. Gain of four, second and six, in the Central 26. Central was shifting. Stevens trying to get to the outside. Good keep his feet He's down at the 24-yard line. Again, free safety David Johnson, along with Duran Robertson, have been making a bunch of tackles here early. That's the end of the first quarter as Ball State's on the drive and they lead by four. Back here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Jim Isabella, Greg Brenda, John LaChance. As we update you on the scoreboard, number two, Notre Dame, fresh off their defeat of Miami, leading in that ball game. West Virginia, my sleeper pick to win it all. Up 7-0, and they're just getting underway between Arkansas and Houston. It's the third and three for Ball State, and the pass is completed to Bernie Pomley for a first down. That'll be first down number six for Ball State. Now, Bernie Parmley knew where he needed to be. Good pass by David Riley. Ball State is marching again. And they're now down to the 16-yard line of Central. Parmley getting the ball. Weak coverage by Central Michigan on that play. He was open by three or four yards. From the Central 16 on first and 10 now. Ball State with those six first downs. Simple little dive play into the middle. The second and long coming up. Brennan Baker, the fullback, getting a carry. He's only carried the ball so far this season for 22 carries for 77 yards. Now, Jim, we're in a situation here where Central Michigan cannot afford to give up too many points. Uh, and have a, 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 a chance to fight back because it's a predict, uh, primarily a running offense for them. That's true. And second and nine, the delay into the middle. 
And again, as they gave it off to Parmalee, they went right at the Chippewas. And now I'm going to be curious to see what kind of a play call we have here on third down, Greg. Any predictions? Yeah, they're not going to run right into the middle of the line. <laughs> Good, Greg. <laughs> That's what you get paid for, those big, those big gambles. <laughs> How about a rollout? You want a rollout or a pocket pass? If I'm going to go with a pocket pass. I go rollout. Okay. Six of nine today for Riley for 49 yards, and they're going to they're gonna think about it. Yep, each team has now taken a timeout, and that should tell you how crucial this ball game is to these two teams. Again, Ball State has one loss in the MAC. They're four and one. Central, the only unbeaten team left in the MAC at three and zero. Oh. So this is a swing game, maybe for the season for both teams. Well, you know, you'd, you'd expect Central Michigan wanting to win, uh, or Central Michigan wanting to win at home, and it's a big game for them. In the fact that they, if they lose, they now have two losses, and if uh, Ball State loses, uh, or they'd have one loss, and Ball State loses, they have two losses here. And Central Michigan would like that little cushion it has right now. John LaChance, what do you think they might do in this particular situation? Well, I know how you two have fared in the booth this year calling plays. Let me try to watch this one. Uh, watch with the tailback coming out of the backfield. There seems to be some some confusion with the center of Richmond linebackers and who's got the tailback in certain in certain sets. So uh, I think Ball State's coaches upstairs have seen that. Watch with the tailback coming out of the backfield and maybe a little flare in the flats. Okay, we got a flare in the flats, a rollout. I say he's going to just sit back in the pocket and hit one of his receivers. <laughs> Sean Jones to the near side. Nobody's Herb Jackson to the right side. Nobody's picking an end around here, Jim. Shotgun. Riley throws it. Eugene Riley has it, but he's shy of the first down by about a half a yard from the initial spot. Duran Robertson had good coverage. Now what do you do on fourth and short? I'd go for it. Here's Eugene again. Well, he picked down the guy that is leading Ball State in receiving in Eugene Riley. He's your sure hands player. He just didn't get far enough for the first down. And again, knowing where the first down yard marker is, and I think he's coming up a little short. It's interesting, we've seen that twice today already. Well, getting back to that play selection, I think I'm the closest, so I should get the gold star for that one. I'll get Willie Stargell to personally get one for your cap. <laughs> I'm dating myself with that. Clock stops with 13.37 remaining, and it will be fourth and one. And I do not see Kenny Stucker coming on, so here's what's interesting. Now, they're not going to go to the shotgun, apparently, because Brennan Baker and Mark Stevens are coming into the lineup. That's usually an indication that they won't go in that formation. Sometimes they'll do that on a short yardage situation, believe it or not. <laughs> David Riley. Stevens is the deep man. Fourth and one from the seven of Central Michigan. Stevens did not get it. Miles McHaney, a defensive guard, 6'3", 245 pound junior, and Craig Allen stuffed him. I had a feeling they would run right into there, and because I, I think they were trying to outguess Central Michigan on that play. They didn't outguess Miles McKinney, though. He really stuck him, and that's a great shift of momentum positively for Central Michigan. Watch it here. Oh, he levels him. What I don't like about that kind of play is to go to the tailback, line up that deep, it's too far. Might as well line him up closer if you're thinking about that. So it's first and 10 now, Central, but they have the ball on their own seven. Bender to Mark Hopkins, the tight end, first down, just shy of the 25. Mike Cruz made the tackle, but again, Greg, Jeff Bender's going to his tight end. Well, they like to use tight ends because those guys can get open. Look at that, just a little quick fake in outside, and it was a quick developing play. You've got to make that pass very, very quickly. Central Michigan with their fifth first down. Here's a throw, batted around and incomplete. Batted at the line of scrimmage. And that was almost intercepted by Mose Carter. 
In fact, he had it momentarily. Ralph Wise batted that ball down, and what a story he's been since Steve Paris went down with an injury. He's had a fumble recovery this year, 37 tackles, and frankly, Paris hasn't been missed because of the play of Wise. Second and 10, shy of the 25. Interesting, they decided to go inside again to Donnie Riley. Greg Shackelford stood him up and drove him back. Good tackle by Shackelford. So here comes a third down for Central Michigan. They're one of two in that department this afternoon. Central from their own 27. Bender looking. And he's got options again for first down as he gets up to about the 47-yard line of Central Michigan. That really is a tough pass to complete again. And boy, oh boy, what a great catch. Greg Darnica on the tackle. And we should point out, if you throw that short, the linebacker goes long distance. Got to go a long way to cover the tight end on an out pattern. First and 10 Central at their own 47, with 12-15 remaining here in the first half. They went to Connolly up to about the 19-yard line. Tim Walton again on the tackle. Walton the second leading tackler on the team, and of course his linebacker teammate Greg Garnica, last year's MVP in the MAC on defense, is number one. Garnick is also third in the MAC in tackles, total tackles. Double line left this time. Second and eight from the 49 of Central. Riley. Up to about the 47 yard line. Walton made the tackle again. Tim Walton is getting quite a workout this afternoon. He's all over the place. You know, he's only 5'11", and sometimes the pros make a big deal about size. Baloney, if a guy can play football and can get to the ball like that, he can play anywhere. He weighs 230 pounds, and I think 200 pounds are in his arms. You see him on the cleanup as it's third and four. Central two of three on third down conversions. From the ball state, 47. Better will dump to Riley. He will have the first down. Garnica in pursuit, but it's a first down for Central Michigan. Each team now has six unofficially. David Hall on the tackle. Great use of the tailback coming out of the backfield. A simple rollout and hits him coming out. Boy, you're making those linebackers chase him a long way. Interesting, isn't it, how much they're throwing? Figures a top rushing team to throw the ball a lot in the gym. <laughs> First and 10 points. I'll tell you, they were coming. And finally, Mose Carter gets him, but he may have a face mask. They were shooting in Sean Restpress, but Carter got there first. However, he may have gotten the face mask. Should have been down as soon as he had him in, in containment. Now watch this play again. Mose Carter comes in here. Let's see where he gets him. Well, he gets him around the helmet. I don't see the face there. That's when the play should have stopped. There it is, the left hand afterwards. Well, I, number one, I think the referee should have blown the whistle before the face mask. That's four major penalties totaling 55 yards on Ball State here in the first half. A third face mask penalty, but I'm, I'm going to debate the official on that. I think he was in the grass before he grabbed the face mask. First and 10 the 25 of Ball State. Riley took four Cardinals, including Todd Fennell, finally to bring him down. Should point out, well, there's technically no in the grass. If your forward progress is stopped, well, that's what he was. He wasn't going anywhere, Jim. He was absolutely not going anywhere. He wasn't going to break out of that tackle. The referee's got to protect the quarterback a little bit. Jack Lambert disagrees with you, by the way. Just sent us a wire. <laughs> no skirts on quarterbacks. Second and eight. Ball State 23. Bender under pressure. Throws. And it's picked and caught. Bunnell tipped it to Eric Reed. Do you believe? 
believe that? <laughs> well, Todd Finnell did all he could just to get his hands on the ball. Watch this play again. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Finnell gets his hands on the ball, but good concentration by Reed for the touchdown. 25 yards on that play, and Finnell just lost his footing. Watch it again. Watch Finnell's feet here. Great concentration. He just tipped the ball for the touchdown. Scored for Central Michigan if you're just joining us. 25-yard tip play from Jeff Bender was under pressure. And it's now 10-7 Central Michigan as the ball blows off the tee. Tony Parmalee and Sean Jones are back deep for Ball State. Now, I thought December 25th was a way off. <laughs> Nine plays, 93 yards. It took three minutes and 30 seconds. And again, Reed with a 23-yard reception. And we've had the wind shift here, Jim. It was coming out of the north. Now it's out of the west. And it is getting quite chilly. Sean Jones at his own five for Ball State. Brought down at about the 28-yard line by Craig Thompson out of Flint, Michigan. Yeah, it is getting cold. Right now, Why did you guys bring me a blanket for the truck? I think we're going to need a blanket in the booth before the game is over. First and ten, Ball State. It's up on the hill, or the knoll. If you want to get There's that mountain we've been talking about. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good 30 feet in the air, isn't it? <laughs> 9.56 remains. First half, and Ball State now trailing. 10-7. Riley from his own 28 under pressure. Flag down, they got a clip. Riley will gain seven, but it'll be called back. And that'll be penalty number five on Ball State, another major. They have four for 55 already. And I presume this will be a clip. Riley having a good day thus far. And so far in the season, David, out of Germantown, Ohio, five TDs, two interceptions. I think Brian Outlaw was guilty of the, of the clip number 67. There we go, use the hand. Offense. Once again. Holding that time. So you get five penalties, 65 yards. Clock stops with 9.48 remaining in the first half. And they'll spot the ball now back to the 18 of Ball State. And they go to the shotgun immediately. They give it to Parmalee. He's got a lane. Parmalee up to the 30-yard line. He's a, a lot back on that play. It'll be second and eight. Interesting play call, Jim. It looked as if the linebackers were slow in picking up this play. They held their ground, but I think they were kind of waiting for him before they reacted to the to the play call. One thing is when you spread it out, Greg, you do have some lanes available if you can get it in right. a situation they, like this. They did, not, they did not pursue towards the line of scrimmage. They kind of waited until Riley came to them. Or Pomley came to them. Second and eight. Ball stayed at their own 31. Riley wanted to go deep instead, goes to Eugene Riley out of bounds. Almost a fantastic catch, but he couldn't keep his feet down. <laughs> he turned his body to one handed to begin with, Jim. That was a great catch out of bounds, of, of course, but boy, oh boy, what a tremendous athlete he is. And you hate to see what happened to him last week with the two fumbles. What's interesting, Greg, is that was the second receiver that time. He wanted to go deep, apparently, to Herb Jackson. See him pump yeah, right pump there? once and then the play. Watch this. Look at this. Huh. Gets one foot in, but no, it couldn't, didn't get both, didn't get either foot in. Apparently now he got one in and it counts. Third and eight. David Riley throws down the middle. Herb Jackson somehow hung on at the 46 of Ball State first down. James Williams, the cornerback in coverage. Well, I'd like to see that play again if he did get one foot in. <laughs> 
It looked initially like he did get it, but uh, apparently did not. This will make Ball State 2 of 4 on third down conversions. Good coverage, but the pass thrown a, a split second before the tackle. Excellent coverage on Central Michigan. It was just a well-executed play. Jackson 5, 555-pounder out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. First and 10, Ball State at their own 46. Here comes Parmalee. Picked up about five yards into central territory at about the 47 as Mark Dennis is in on the tackle. Bernie Parmley, an exceptionally gifted player. 4-3 speed, like a ticking time bomb, just waiting to go off. He's got two more years to play, Jim. Stevens comes back into the lineup as they again continue to rotate the tailbacks. From the central 47, Eugene Riley in motion. Looked like there was some movement, no call. And they felt it him. Dave Deletka, defensive tackle, a junior, made the stop for Central. That'll bring up third and about five. Dave Deletka, good instincts player. George Rickenstrick uh, lipped off the field. And in Scott Lamphere. Sophomore out of North Branch will come into that inside linebacker slot. We'll see if they notice that in the call here. Ball State at the Central 48 from the shotgun. David Riley looks. Herb Jackson can't hang on. Look to hit him right in the hands. It's incomplete. And Ball State will punt again. Jackson was open. Let's watch this play again. It was a well-thrown ball. He had to throw the ball to the outside. Jackson goes for it. Well, he should have had it. That goes in the oops category as Donnie Mullins is back into punt for Ball State. Kevin Floyd in single safety back deep for Central Michigan. No pressure. Mullins gets it very high. Ball may carry into the end zone. And it does. Got a little assist that time. 6.40 left, first half. Central with the ball and the lead by three. Back here in Mount Pleasant. Uh, John LaChance, what's the story on George Rickhamstrick? All right, Central held there with the key questions. George Rickhamstrick limped off the field. They're busily working on that ankle right now. He's in a lot of pain. That would be a big blow for Central, John. 6.40 remains, first half. Central, their own 20. Bender under pressure and is finally sacked. Mose Carter got him the second time around. Out of Gary, Indiana, the senior, third leading tackler on the squad, and he's a loaded six foot, 235, and quick as a cat. Very good penetration by the Ball State defense. Interesting that Central Michigan throwing on first down. You, you'd kind of think that uh, with the time remaining here in the first half, they'd like to run the ball, run off some time on the clock, and perhaps get some more points on the board before halftime. Each team with seven, second and 17. They went to Donnie Riley. He got stuck but good by David Hall, and it will bring up a third and long situation, and so far, Central is two of three on the day, third downs. Yeah, we have another injury on the field. Donnie Riley staying down for the moment. Well, John Hood did not start the game with a knee injury, and Hood has not been healthy all season long. Again, uh, they're well stocked at tailback, Jim, but to lose a Donnie Riley and a John Hood, uh, that does not bear well at all. Yeah, Maurice Brandon and Darnell Rush. Now, Brandon is now number two on the charts, and then comes Darnell Rush. Brandon, 21, Rush is number 25. Clock stops with 5.50 remaining. Riley really got popped by Hall. 49 yards on the day. Riley came into the day with the 616 yards. Kentucky leading Georgia early on in action around the country, seven to nothing. OU and Kent State are tied at seven also. It's a big battle there for OU. They're two and one in the back. Kent at one and three. 
Third and call it nine. Bender with time. Pump fake. First intercepted by Craig Garnica. Garnica to the 18-yard line. Joe Conley brought him down. But it's a first turnover of the game for Central Michigan. Each team has one. Well, that was not very good judgment on the part of Jeff Bender. He threw it right into coverage. He looked one way, fucked it once, now went towards the middle, and Garnica did. He held his crowd, stood right where he was at, and came up with the interception. That is really going to hurt Ball State. Allen had an interception earlier for Central Michigan. And Ball State trailing 10-7 with 5.22 remaining. Gets the ball on the 19 of Central. David Riley throws across to Eugene Riley. Eugene down at about the two. First down, number eight in the ball game. It'll bring a first and goal for Ball State. Great play action pass by David Riley on that. And they're going to capitalize on a... Big, big mistake from Central Michigan. Watch this play again. Eugene Riley is like a runaway semi. Just knocking him out of bounds on the two-yard line. 6'3", junior redshirt out of Cincinnati. He's definitely, as we said before, a pro prospect. First and goal from the two. All-state trailing, 10-7. Sean Jones in motion. Bernie Parmalee, touchdown, Ball State. Four fifty remaining here in the first half, and Ball State back on top. Watch this again. Parmalee just breaks the line, the plane, just giving that ball over the goal line for the touchdown. That's all you need to do. Kenny Stucker, number one of the Mac, in scoring at 9.8 points per game between PATs and field goals. Sean Griffith is the holder. And it's good. Four minutes, 50 seconds remains in a very entertaining first half. Now it's the Cardinals on top by four. Double trouble for the Chippewas when the they travel to visit the Broncos of Western Michigan. That'll be in Kalamazoo, the Wonder Twins of Western Michigan. Tony Kimbrough, Robert Davis lead the Broncos attack on next week's MAC Game of the Week, live at 12.30 Eastern. Kenny Stucker boots it deep. And it's a loose football. Billy Smith picks it up and gets crunched. He may have lost it again, let's see. Well, he didn't hang on, back at the 10. Lousy field position for Central Michigan. Billy Smith is very lucky. Not only did he get to the ball, Jim, that he held on after the stick because that ball could have been jarred loose again and Central Michigan could have been in real trouble. Nobody called for that ball. As you see what happened after the interception by Greg Garnica, Parmalee now with his second touchdown of the game. We said this would be a low-scoring game, Jim. Yeah, right. <laughs> First and 10 central. Donnie Riley back into the lineup. Up to about the 13-yard line. Left end break. Shackelford was there on the stop. Now, let's see uh, how Bender reacts to this situation after being uh, snake bit once. Bender having a a pretty good day up until that interception, but he has been under some pressure. That's the great equalizer of any good quarterback. Bender. And Derek Westfield and Mose Carter nail him at about the 10. Derek Westfield got the hand on him first. Mose Carter came up to help. And Bender for a loss. Now what do you do, Greg, as the Cardinals are smiling at this point? Third well, long. You have to throw the ball. See, I, I think this is the crucial part of the game, Greg, because if you take away Central's game, that could change a whole lot of things as far as the running attack goes. We'll see if they blitz or not, Ball State. Central backed up on their own 11. Up to the 28-yard line, 
Sean Respress, the right end, finally brought him down. Now they split the receivers out. Uh, I think Ball State was guessing, the guy was guessing that he'd throw the ball and had an open lane here, right through the line. Three fifteen and counting remaining here in the first half. Central trailing by four, first and ten. Throws Bender with pressure from Carter. Here's the screen to Donnie Riley. And frankly, he outran his blocking there. Charles Kelly in on the step in at cornerback. Senior out of Tempe, Arizona. You have to wait for your blockers to set up, and I think he got a little over-anxious here. Watch it. They go one way. Now he's getting set up for the screen. Catches the ball. Good pass. But again, just goes past his blockers. you got to wait for your blockers to make the tackle or make the block because then you're going to get pursued by the defense. Update. Notre Dame now leads the Air Force 14-6. to We'll be updating the scores throughout the course of this game especially in the MAC race. 239 and counting. As you can see, second along from the 39. 29 made that. Of Central Michigan. Bender under pressure again. Knocked down by Tim Walton. And you know what? Greg Garnica was looking for another interception there if he doesn't knock it down. I know. Good play by Walton. Just batted that ball down. Watch it here again. Rolling out. Doesn't take his eye off the receiver. I think that was the big problem there. And Walton read it all the way. Central, three of five on third down conversions. But one of those misses was the interception by Garnica that set up Parmelee's second touchdown. Third nine from the 29. Bender fires over the middle. Caught by Eric Reed. First down. And they'll mark his forward progress around the 44 of Central. Well, on that play, you credit the offensive line for making that play happen because Reed has to run a long way. Good coverage, but again, they give Bender enough time to throw the ball. And that's what set the play up. Interesting, isn't it? He was the team MVP last year in spite of the great season by Hood, with over 1,100 yards. Each team with eight first downs unofficially. Here's Maurice Brandon driving and then driven back by Tim Walton after a game of about four. Clock continues to run with under a minute 50 to go in the first half. Each team has used the timeout. Now, they have to really manage the clock well here, Jim, because the time is running down and they still have a long way to go. Betsy throws it here. Kolchev has come into the lineup at a wideout slot. Brandon is in motion. One back. Bender under pressure, fires downfield. Reed makes the catch at the 29 of Ball State. First down Central Michigan. Clock stops momentarily with 117 to play. I'll tell you one thing, he is what you would call a pressure player. He saw an open part in the, in the zone there, gets in between the defenders, just has, says concentrate, catches the ball. That's what he has to do. Don't worry about running after, catch the ball first. Great hands by Reed. One of the reasons uh, he was the MVP last year. First and 10 now, central with the ball, State 29. Bender with all night to throw it. Here's Mark Hopkins, and Ball State kept him in bounds. They may have to take a timeout here, they will. Central uses their second timeout. Charles Kelly, a sensational play, Greg. Well, that's right, uh, keeping him in bounds, which means that Central Michigan had to take the timeout, which gives them one left, and then still they got uh, 22 yards, 23 yards to go for, for six points. Watch it, it just stands up and said, hey, there's no way you're getting out of bounds. <laughs> you're gonna have to call a timeout. Now, Charles Kelly is five foot nine. Mark Hopkins is 6'2", 235 pounds. Kelly must be strong. 51 seconds from halftime here. And this will be an interesting situation. Now let's update you on the scoreboard. West Virginia still leading BC. Number two, Notre Dame, as we mentioned earlier, ahead of Air Force. And Arkansas, who everybody says has one of the weak schedules 
around. They haven't played a 500 team yet. Taking on old rival Houston. They try to continue to get ready for bowl action. They are 6-0 on the season. Herb Dramedy, his winning mark right now is at 71%. Trying to get the lead back before the half. Central has now used two of their three timeouts, second and four, from the Ball State 23. Bender dumps it over the middle of the family. First down at about the 16-yard line. Greg Garnica on the tackle there, made his initial block, and then was free for about five or six yards and made the play. There you see the clock, as it is first and ten. Bender, Rob to Reed, and he's got it, and they marked him inbounds. Fans aren't going to like that. Again, Charles Kelly knocked him down. No huddle. There's the story. The clock is now the enemy. And guess what? Central had to use their... Wait a minute. Ball State used the timeout. That's interesting. There must have been some confusion. So apparently Ball State had to call the timeout. Well, I guess Ball State played it safe there, Jim. Duramity wanted to run a play, and Ball State said, hey, wait a minute. Let's settle down here because they're now inside our own 10-yard line. Let's set up. And so what if we take a timeout? We want to be set on defense. I think it was a good play call by uh, Ball State to get that timeout. Well, this is the momentum swinger. If Central scores a touchdown, they'll have the lead at the half, probably. And Ball State, if they can hold a field goal, keeps the lead. So there's a lot of momentum in the balance here. Now, I would guess they'll roll to the near side of the field toward your bottom of the screen. The ball is on the left hash mark. And Reed is one-on-one -on -one to the right. Well, David Hall is over there. Todd Pinnell has him at the corner slot. Bender waiting for the officials to start it. Here we go. Hopkins tight end to the right. And Reed is out of your picture to the bottom right side. Possibly one and one there. Nope, Bender going to go the other way. Here's the lob. Incomplete. He wanted Don Kolchev, a red-shirted junior out of Trenton, Michigan. Charles Kelly. Charles Kelly, there's a flag down on the sideline. Let's see, I think he might have... Uh, might have gone upfield too soon. Yeah, I think he started just a, a snap ahead of the count. But it's from the far sideline. As they were talking over with Ball State. The key thing is only three seconds came off the clock, and now it really doesn't matter. I would decline the penalty and take the uh, down. Illegal motion. Offense, second down. Now, at this point, I don't see why you're giving the offense an extra down to run a play, Jim. Well, the only I don't think the yardage really means that much at this point. They must have faith because the one thing I don't like about that is you still have more room to operate now. You should exactly. throw it downfield anyway. Exactly. I, I would have taken the down. Carruthers is split wide to the right into the ball game. Bender looking that way. Bender fires for Carruthers. He's got it. He's out of bounds. Just outside the five. Stopping the clock with 20 seconds remaining. Todd Fidel on the coverage. That time again, Jack Carruthers, junior out of East Lansing. That's only his second catch of the season. That brings up second down and five, I believe. That was a first down, so it's first and goal from the five. Reed in there, and remember, no Riley, no Hood in the backfield. Bender rolls for Reed on the play. Oh, he had him wide open. Fennell and David Hall were coming, but too late. Yeah, they were late on the coverage. Reed was wide open, and Bender just threw it a little over his head. I, I think Bender is kicking himself right now because he had six more yardage. But uh, Ball State pursued very, very well on the play. Well, I don't know. If I were Ball State, I'd have signed somebody just to, to watch Riley out of the backfield. Update now. Miami and Toledo tied at 7. 
Here's a third and one from the Ball State 41. Stockford was in motion. That'll be a first down as they went directly inside. It'll be first and 10 now for Central Michigan, who's five of nine on third down conversions. Well, they are executing very, very well here, Jim, in the uh, second half. They are just grinding up the yards. They're using a lot of time off the clock. Their play selection is very, very good. And uh, it seems that they're wearing Ball State's defense down here in the early goings of the third quarter. From the Ball State 40, first down. That's the fourth first down in this drive, 19 in the game. Maurice Brandon tripped up as he got to the 37-yard line by Greg Garnica. Incidentally, we should mention, Greg, that Ball State's had a great third quarter record. They've only given up three points in the third quarter. They've scored 59. Last year, Ball State scored only 13 points in the third quarter and gave up 70. That's for the season. Second down from the Ball State 38. Option to Brandon, who somehow hung on to the football. Mose Carter dancing around with the tackle. Yeah, that option play, it was thrown a little bit behind. Brandon went back to get the ball. That's why it was a bit uh, slow developing, and there's another injury to Ball State. They're coming out to check, and uh, limping off the field is Garnica. So in this half already, Jim, we've seen Walton come off, and now Garnica. Walton back in there, but uh, again, uh, they're really hammering the middle part of that Ball State defense and the strength of Ball State's defense. And that'll bring in Steve Jordan, 6'2", 210-pounder out of Cincinnati, Ohio, as Garnica's replacement. Third and long. Bender looking downfield, and Ralph Wise pulls him down with some help that time from Greg Shackelford. But why? 6'2", 245-pound junior redshirt out of Middletown, Ohio, made the big play. Yeah, just grabbed him in the back of the shirt there and held him from going uh, upfield. Great play by Ralph Wise, because he had some room upfield watching here, the pressure developing. Now Wise grabs him. He has room to run, but he holds him down, and uh, now Central Michigan has to punt. Todd Winters will punt. Todd Fennell back deep for Ball State. Now keep in mind, the line of scrimmage is the 39. We could see some chicanery here. Winners will just take his time and lobs it way up in the air. Fennell will not even touch it. And it took a bad bounce as far as Central is concerned. It'll be a touchback. So Ball State will have the ball first and 10 with the lead by one. 8.23 remaining here in the third quarter. When you think of rivalries, what comes to mind? Army, Navy, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State. Well, in this part of the land, it's Western Michigan going head to head with Central Michigan. Next Saturday, it's the Broncos and the Chippewas live from Waldo Stadium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's 12:30 Eastern. Master Videos, MAC game of the week. John LaChance has an update on uh, George Rickenstrick. John? Good news for Central. He's back in the game. They've retaped that ankle, and I think that is going to be a plus for the Central defense in the second half. First and 10 for Ball State at their own 20. Bernie Pomeley. Not much on the play. Mark Dennis, an outside linebacker made the tackle. Greg, we were talking off the air just a moment ago. Really, that was more frustration for Central. Well, they took uh, almost a half of the third quarter off the clock and came up with nothing. Also had the wind to their back and came up with nothing. That's got to be very, very frustrating to Central Michigan. And again, Ball State with the wind in the fourth quarter. Gain of only one. Second and nine for the 21. Riley dumps it to Brennan Baker, the fullback. That'll bring up a third and five. Duran Robertson, the strong safety out of Detroit, made the stop. Good play by Duran Robertson, uh, Jim. They flooded the zone with three receivers to the near side, yet Central Michigan was able to come up with the big play. Good defense by CMU on that. 
That flag is in the corner, as you can see, of the north end zone. So looks like we have a crosswind now. Shotgun. Third and five. Riley with all the time in the world. And Dave, uh, Eugene Riley from David Riley. Eugene still on his feet. It took a convoy to get him down. He's finally down at the 46 of Ball State, first and 10. Well, they cleared out that side, and he just hit Riley on the fly here. Watch it, had a lot of time to throw the ball. Riley coming across the middle, just throws it, clears it out, and then it takes him, well, about four tacklers to bring him down. He just will not give up. Riley plus Riley equals deadly. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. That was not written by John the Chance. <laughs> first and ten ball state. Their ninth first down in the game. Bernie Parmalee up to the 49. Rich Curtis, an inside linebacker. The sophomore, second leading tackler on the team with the stop, along with uh, some help from his friends. But I'll tell you what, Greg, this is becoming an interesting little game of chess to see what balls they will go with next. No, it certainly is, and you got to believe now that they took the momentum away from Central Michigan to start the third quarter, and they could put some points on the board here and then have that wind advantage in the fourth quarter. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what Central Michigan can come up with. Only six minutes remains here in the third quarter. David Riley hands it to Mark Stevens. Flag is down as he gets punched in the backfield by Scott Lampier, who came in earlier for George Rickhamstrick. However, we do have a flag. We have some, some offsides, I believe. Uh, he was thrown at the line of scrimmage here, and it's against what's holding. I thought somebody had lined up offsides, but they're going to call holding against Ball State. Don't think they'll take it here, we'll see. Holding, offense, decline. Third down. Well, there was a loss on the play, and it's uh, third and long now. Five penalties in the first half for Central Michigan for 63. Five for 65 on Ball State in the first half. Well, penalties, more than we're used to. So it'll be Parmalee and Wilson joining David Riley, as usual, in the backfield. Herb Jackson split to the near side. Third and ten, throws! Herb Jackson with the catch at the Central 38, first down. What an outstanding play by Herb Jackson. He had triple coverage on him, yet he came up with the ball. Great play. Watch this out of the shotgun, a low snap. Has time, over the middle, Jackson in a crowd, brings it down, tackled immediately, and holds on to the ball. Earlier, the Fort Wayne native had dropped one, but he's made a couple of good catches right down the pike since. First down, Ball State at the Central 38. Let's see if this might be an audible by David Riley. Draw to Parmalee. Great cut! And he is down at the 33-yard line. He left three guys with nothing but turf. David Johnson finally nailed him, and we have a late flag. This could be a personal foul. Yeah, I think so. It was a late flag, and uh, Ball State clapping their hands, so it's against Central Michigan. Personal foul. It's going to cost them some more yards. Hardly. What a shifty runner. That was truly amazing for a short game. One short of 100. With the two TDs. And here's the call. Personal foul, defense. First down. Six penalties now for 78 yards on Central. Herb Dramedy not real happy about this. Because that'll put the ball at the 18. He wants to know where the late hit was. It was away from the ball. Herb Jackson was signaling something immediately. And then came the flag. Under five minutes to play, third quarter. First down at the Central 18, Ball State has the football. David Riley to Adam Wilson into the lineup now. Shy of the 15, Dave Deletka, a junior defensive tackle, made the stop. 
Well, here we have Ball State methodically moving the ball downfield, Jim, getting helped out by that big penalty there, running a lot of time off the clock. Well, this, this quarter has really flown by. We're almost down to the four-minute mark. Remember, you play eight conference games. Ball State at 4-1, losing last week at home to Eastern. Central at 3-0. And Adam Wilson, cut up the fight. Shy of the five, that'll be a first down. That's number 11, as David Johnson saved the touchdown. Good cross block up at the line of scrimmage here. Watch it here as Adam Wilson gets a big hole. Great trap blocking on that play, sprung him loose. They've done a great job on the outside backers, Dennis and Allen today, if you notice. Well, Ball State has that great offensive line anchored by their center, Ted Ashburn. Guards right, outlaw, tackles, Whitlock, and Engelman. Riley hands it to Adam Wilson, who dives to the three-yard line. Mark Dennis in on that stop. I like to talk about the offensive linemen who don't get a lot of credit, but Todd Wright, a 6'3", 260-pound uh, junior, and not only is he a football player, he was a hockey and bas baseball player in high school. He was a hockey goalie. I saw him play. His team won the state championship one year. Can you imagine seeing a goalie that big? <laughs> How could you get the puck past him? That's what I want to know. The fact is, they didn't. And Ball State will take one of their three timeouts here. 3.06 remains. Ball State on the drive, and they have the ball in the lead by one. <laughs> Conference sports fans can now follow all the Big Mac action with a subscription to the Mac Bulletin. The Bulletin is an independent newspaper published 25 times per year, weekly during football and basketball seasons, plus an issue in December and a summer issue. A one-year subscription to the Mac Bulletin is only $20. That's 25 issues for $20, less than $1 per issue. To subscribe, send a check or money order to the Mac Bulletin, Box 427, Bellevue, Ohio, 44811. What are you going to do when you hear that Sprint's phone card saves you as much as 10, 20, even 30% versus AT&T? And that the phone card gives you the best possible sound quality, thanks to Sprint's exclusive nationwide digital fiber optic network. For starters, you'll want to call U.S. Sprint now and get your free phone card. And then maybe you'll want to cut AT&T out of the picture. Coming back, it'll be second and three. Ball State with the ball on the three. Second and goal, we should say, from the three. All right, Greg, since you've had so much success calling these plays, what are you doing here? <laughs> All of us. All right, we'll roll to the near side. I say pitch left side to Adam Wilson, who's the tailback. Jones in motion from the three. Well, it was Wilson, but not a pitch back as he gets drilled. J.J. Moringa. The sophomore, 6'4", 250-pounder, crunched him. And now we have third and goal from the three. I don't know, Jimmy. You have a lot of speed in that backfield for Ball State, so why not take advantage of it? I, I try my luck at least once to roll to that near side. you got so much room and see if you can beat the defense. I want to see here what they're going to do. They bring Parmalee in. They line up behind Baker, and the flanker is Jones. It's on the bottom part of your picture. Riley! To Sean Jones, the flanker didn't get it. Down at the one-yard line, James Williams and David Johnson saved the TD. Now what do you do? Well, that was outstanding, outstanding efforts by the James Williams, by the parts of James Williams and David Johnson. They weren't going to let that touchdown happen, and they did great pursuit, and they kept them out of the end zone. I'll tell you what, I think that was a pretty good play call too. Let's see what happens. Stucker, the field goal kicker, is in. They'll boot it from 19, and it's good. So, Ball State went for the three. Now that gives them a four-point lead with a minute 56 remaining here in the third quarter. Kenny Stucker has been sensational. Coming into today's action, 13 of 17. One of the tops in the nation. One fifty-six remaining, and Kenny Stucker will kick it off. He is now 14 of 18 on the season in field goals. 
averaging over two field goals a game. It's fielded by Billy Smith, who's had some trouble on the kickoffs. Last through to the 33-yard line. Bowed is blocking well. And it'll be first and ten now for Central Michigan, trailing by four. Well, they got to have some momentum generated because of what the defense did. Keeping Ball State out of the end zone, 13 plays, 78 yards used, almost six and a half minutes off the clock. And they only ended up with three points, had a legitimate shot for a touchdown. Let's see if Central Michigan can take advantage of that. And Central had it seven minutes for last time. It's only their second time they had the ball in the third quarter. Amazing. 150 remains, third quarter. Darnell rushes into the ball game, and Todd Fennell nailed him finally after a gain of about 11. First down, Central Michigan. Great blocking up front, Jim, and that offensive line just shot off the, off the line of scrimmage. They just fired off the line there. 20 first downs for Central Michigan to 12 for Ball State. I wonder if they might throw here. I mean, they've been going, I wouldn't doubt it. Shy of the 45, yes they are. Bender down the middle for Hopkins. And still on his feet. Inside the 20. First down, Central Michigan. Shackleford saved the TD. Well, having your line, having Greg Shackleford make the tackle is incredible on that play. Both the initial tacklers just bounced right off of him. Watch it here. He grabs the ball, punished once, twice, bounces right off. Cruz and Hall have a headache right about now. Cruz and Hall should have made the tackle. Ball at the Ball State 18. Here's Darnell Rush. Tried to cut back and spins to about the 14-yard line. Mark Hopkins on that last catch, the leading receiver this year for the Chippewas. 14 catches, 143 yards coming in for the junior out of Flint, Michigan. What a load he is. But you gotta make the tackle on that, and uh, that's what causes major consternation for coaches on the sidelines when you don't make tackles that you should make. Remember Central had two field goals when they had a couple of touchdowns. This red zone, as they call it, Darnell Rush shy of the 15-yard line. Let's bring that point up again. Kevin Nickel with two field goals, but and Reed hung on to one ball. If it's on the right side, that's a touchdown. And then that short yardage situation on third and goal for the two, Ball State stopped that. I'm still impressed with uh, Bender this afternoon, Jim. He's missed on a few big play attempts, but he's also come up with a few big plays of his own. Now it's third and two. Normally you'd say, boy, the way this is going, you never know. Reed is the low man split to the right. Bender to rush. Turns in. And it's going to be close, and that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. So when we resume action, coming back in the fourth quarter, Central Michigan appears to be short. will have the ball and a decision to make. We'll be back. Here's John LaChance with an update on the max scores. All right, Jim, real quickly, we'll try to update you right now in the third quarter. Ohio Kent tied at 14. Toledo, Miami, Toledo on top, 14 to seven. That's also in the third at Yeager Stadium. Update in the BG Youngstown, uh, Youngstown State game. BG 17, Youngstown State three. And don't forget the big game tonight, Eastern Western, 6 p.m., Rynearson Stadium, Ypsilanti, Michigan. And right here, it's fourth and one from the nine of Ball State. They're going for it. Bender will have the first down. First and goal from the five. I think that's a gutsy call. I would, better taken, believe it. I would have taken the points because it brings you within one. You know you're going to get the ball back. Let's count on your defense to stop Ball State. Yeah, they made the first down, but uh, whew, I think I would have taken almost the three sure points on that one, Jim. Well, I would have agreed with Herb Duramity only in that I think they would have gotten a feeling of failure if they had to settle for another field goal. No agreement in the booth. First and goal. They'll mark it at the six. Darnell Rush. Touchdown Central Michigan! Great 
pusher by the offensive line, Jim. He just follows his blockers right into the end zone. Great blocking up front. Watch it here again. A strong surge, the fullback making a great block, and in for a big touchdown. And Kevin Nickel added the extra point. That was critical because it's a three-point ball game now. The Central back in the lead for the first time in the, since the first half. All right, John LaChance, let's talk a little bit about the story of the win in this final quarter. Well, a three-point lead for Central here. Fourth quarter action. Now, we talked about this last night, possibly going down to a field goal. That's a strong possibility right now. The wind in the fourth quarter is coming out of the northwest, but it's a swirling wind. Once the ball gets up above the bleachers, it's hard to judge. It's going to be hard to judge for both place kickers. We could have proper, uh, proper accurate uh, counting the wind to put it through the uprights, let alone punting. Well, Dennis, uh, Kevin Nickel came into this game 5 of 7, while Stucker, who averaged, is tied for number one with over two field goals a game at 12th in the nation in scoring, had been 13 of 17. He's 1 of 1 on the day, while Nickel is 2 of 2. So, so far, they have responded. Now we're really down to gutsy football, Greg. You have 14.33 left in this game, and it's all riding in these next 14 minutes, especially for Ball State, who really can't afford a loss here. Certainly can. He can't afford two losses in the MAC right now. And Central Michigan riding on that momentum that they have just generated. Kevin Nickel boots it low. Let's see where it bounces. And he let it go out of bounds. Yes, he did. Sean Jones. Did the smart thing, he went near the ball, and if it stayed in, he had to grab it. It'll be a penalty, and they'll have to see where they'll take it now. Remember, they had the option. Now so not a good over. kick. They'll kick it over. Remember, that kick will come back from the 30 now. Well, these two teams figured to try to get one down to the wire, and so far we've not been disappointed. Let's go back to a point. Yeah, you've got two great defenses. Central holds their teams down to 13 a game. Ball State holds them down to 10. The number two and number six teams respectively. Ball State number two by North Carolina State. But maybe, how do you stop these two teams? They are loaded. I agree with you, Jim. I think you're going to see some, some more scoring here in the fourth quarter by both teams. I don't think we've seen the end of the scoring yet in this football game. So the heat is on, even though it's cold. That's how tough it's been out there. Sean Jones, no, nope, Bernie Parmalee, 25. Parmalee on his feet. Bernie Parmalee to the 43 of Central Michigan when it looked like he was going to be stopped at his own 37. James Cooper finally brought him down, and Bernie Parmalee just gave Ball State a big lift. Watch it here. Runs through the wedge. Gets away. Look at the balance. He maintains his balance. Gets some more blocking in front of him. That's a great, that's great football instinct, Jimmy. Waited for some more blockers to form right in front of him. Hey, for 185 pounds and six foot, this sophomore out of Jersey City, New Jersey, is very strong in the legs. First and ten from the Central 43. Ball State with it. Brought down from behind by J.J. Warenka, the sophomore defensive guard. I think J.J. just grabbed him from the back of the shirt and said, Bernie, you're not going anywhere. Stay here. There's Mark Stevens on that play, excuse me. I'll tell you what, when you've got three tailbacks like Stevens, Wilson, and Parmalee, it's like having five or six cannons and your opposition has a little pop gun. Except in this case, the other team has enough cannons to shoot back. David Riley under pressure, throws, and it is caught. Jeff Hammond, the flanker, comes up with it at the Central 28, first down. Well, there was great pressure put on Riley here. He gets hit right after he threw the ball, and a great, great catch. He went up in the air to grab it. Jeff Hammond had a fine season out of Bolingbroke, Illinois, the junior. First and 10 now. Ball just shy of the 27 of Central. Ball State trailing by three. 
13 and a half to play here. Stevens trying to cut back. And no luck at all. Scott Alferink, the senior, 6'1", 230-pounder, got him. Well, the uh, defense really read that right. He wanted to cut back after he saw nothing to the far side. Watch it here. He's going one way, sees it all jammed up, cuts back, and the linebackers held up. And they just really held them back there, and they were over-pursuing in the first half. They are staying home here in the second half, Jim. But again, Ball State moving the ball quite well. That's right, Farmley had a 42-yarder on a cutback in the first exactly. half. Set up his touchdown. One of his two. Second and 13. Riley, looking, he's gonna take himself. He had Farmley open, and David gets crunched for his effort by Rich Curtis, the inside linebacker, who didn't see Parmalee, who was on right in the middle of the field. Yeah, crunched, I, I felt that one up here. Well, when in doubt, run it yourself, I suppose. Well, he had a lot of room to run with the ball, Jim. He was gonna throw the ball, then sees a lot of room developing to the near side and says, hey, wait a minute, I can run five, six, seven yards. Let me do it myself. Of course, he gets popped here at the end. 12 minutes remaining in the football game. Big third down here from the Central 21 shotgun. Wilson is nailed! George Rickhamstrick came like he was shot out of a cannon. Now the reason he was able to make that play, Jim, is they had a little mix-up on that handoff. Had it been a clean handoff, Rickhamstrick may have not been able to make the tackle. Watch it again. Here he comes. So Shannon Griffith will hold. This will be a 49-yarder for Stucker. Here's Kenny's boot. Flag is down. It made it through, but we do have a flag. That would tie the score, but let's check the marker. That came on a fourth and 10 play. Now I think it's against uh, Central Michigan. It was fourth down and 10. Let's see how many yards this penalty would be. It's offsides, only a five yard penalty. Well, you take the field goal. Let's see if it's a first down or not. If it's not, you take the field goal, you take the time. Let's check it. Make sure we have this right for you. Okay. Official still discussing it. Dude, Riley indicating whatever it is, they're gonna get the ball back. All right, it's 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 more than an offside pen. Let's see what it is. Illegal participation, 12 men on the field. First down. Ouch! And Herb Duramini has to be beside himself. Too many men on the field on the special teams. And believe me, that is talked about in practice a lot. Well, somebody missed the job of counting out how many players you have on the field. One guy on defense is supposed to count, and I'll, either he couldn't count or he just didn't do it. Another first down for Ball State. Second via the penalty route. That would have tied the score at 20. Instead, Ball State has it. First down at the 14 of Central Michigan. Bernie Pomley right into the stack. Miles McKinney in a defensive guard stacked him up. Boy, that really hurt. And again, Jim, you know, uh, when, whenever there's a special teams play, one guy is designated to count out to make sure you have 11 players on the field, and that is just inexcusable. Interesting, though, Stucker kicked that from 49 yards out. Now, remember, that wind was blowing, and it just made it through. Would you take points off the board? Well, yes, so. because he got the first down. All Chanel did. Second and seven. Riley got Jones in the end zone. And it's incomplete. Ken Strong saw it. The ball got there too late. Oh, Ken Strong could have run 95 yards for a touchdown had he made the interception. And to be honest, Greg, Riley didn't throw the ball soon enough because he had him open. Oh, he had him open. He had him open for a few seconds there. I think he's looking. Then he finally gets it, but Kim Strong gives him enough time to move up. He said, oh, no, I could have had a touchdown on that. Watch it again. Great play by Kim Strong, but, boy, it hit the shoulder pad. And, oh, that was a good flip. That's the danger of taking the field goal off the board. Third and seven from the central level. Shotgun and Riley handle 
a bad snap. Riley, he's got room. He'll lob it. Touchdown, Eugene Riley. And so the gamble worked. Ball State regains the lead with 10.26 remaining. Well, he had a lot of time to throw this ball. Good coverage initially, Jim. Now he's rolling out. He actually could have run with the ball. Might have gotten the first down. Sees Eugene Riley in the end zone for a touchdown. And Ball State back out on top. Stucker has been perfect on extra points. This is a crucial one here. Would put him up by four. He got it. 10, 26 left. What a game. Ball State goes back in front by four. The big plays came again by Ball State as they have just made play after play today. Good kickoff return by Bernie Pommel. He set it up. Here's Darnell Rush says, forget it. The wind really took that ball out of the end zone. Greg, let's go back to the point we made on that last play as far as whether you take the field goal or not. Well, they took points off the board. They got the first down. They're moving the ball quite well. And I just got to believe that, you know, even if they don't make a first down again, you've moved 10, 15 yards closer. He had kicked the 46-yard field goal. So, and with his ability to kick field goals and his consistency, I don't think you're really taking points off the, off the board, and they got a touchdown out of it. Plus the fact both these teams are really moving the football. Got to get everything you can here. 10-26 remains. Going with a straight handoff up the middle. Gain of about four on the play. Went to Darnell Rush. Tim Walton came in on the blitz, and it was a good play call by Central Michigan. Now we get into the interesting scenarios of play calling because we have seen the ball go up quite a few times for Central. After a gain of three, let's see what they do. Plus you have the clock to worry about it. How much time do you want to take off the clock? If I were Central Michigan, I want to get points as quickly as possible. Under 10 minutes to play. Here's Rush trying to cut back and he gets up to about the 28 yard line. Two yards short of the first down. Greg Shackelford in on the stop. And this is the other big game tonight. Western, having been upset last week by Kent State University, facing Eastern, who knocked off Ball State in Muncie. Each team, critically, has one loss in the back, along with Ball State and OU, who's at 2-1. and one. This is interesting. Two tight ends, only one wideout, Eric Reed. Third and goal. Third and two from the, I should say, 28. And it's a first down. That's first down number 22 for Central Michigan. First and 10 now for Central Michigan at their own 31. Want to make a bet, Greg? This is going to be a pass. I'm not sure about it because they're now starting to move the ball well on the ground. The way he's passed all day, I wouldn't bet against it. That's, that's taking the chicken way out, huh? You bet. <laughs> Here's Darnell Rush. Shackleford nailed him at about the 35-yard line. He's helped out by Tim Walton on that play. I think Central Michigan believes that it can move the ball by mixing up the run and the pass effectively here. And I don't think they're worried about taking a lot of time off the clock. However, I gotta believe that if they, if they take a lot of time off and don't come up with the with the touchdown, uh, you know, it could give Ball State the opportunity to run out the clock at the end. Central from its own 36, 8.15 remains in the game. Bender under pressure. They tried to throw it. I think they're gonna See if they calm down or not. Penalty marker for grounding. And that'll hurt. That should be a loss of down as well. Tim Walton in on the pursuit there. Well, it was number one obvious that he wasn't down. Number two, he just didn't throw it in the direction of a receiver. And I think Bender is saying, hey, my foot was down. Let's see it here. No, nope, he was not down when he threw the ball, but he didn't really throw it in the direction of a receiver. That thing was, that's pretty obvious what he's trying to do. And there's nobody in the neighborhood. 
explaining the options right now. They're checking with each other on this. 8.07 remains in the game. The clock will stop for the moment until they straighten this out. Here's the call. Potential grounding, offense. Five yards, loss of down. And the loss of down, down is the key thing. Let's see watch it again. Let's see if he is down. Let's see if that knee touches. There. There it is. Okay, so he was down. And see, what's bad about that is, then there shouldn't have been a penalty. Right. But it still would have been about the same anyway. Loss of down and third down. Third and 15 for the 25. Bender hangs in. Look out! And it was knocked away at the last second by Sean Restpress, the right end, who had to climb the ladder. But let me tell you something. It was a good thing that the pass was thrown over his head, or it would have been a touchdown for Ball State. Good pressure Watch this here. play again. Good pressure. Throws it over his head, and oh. Fourth down. Todd Winters in the kick. A lot of pressure here. High, but very short kick. David Hall, fair catches at the central 49. The wind held that up. 7.45 remains in the game. Ball State gets the ball back with a four-point lead. Next Saturday, the Western Michigan Broncos host the Central Michigan Chippewas in the most heated rivalry in the Mid-American Conference. Action starts at 12.30 Eastern. You don't want to miss this one. The MAC Game of the Week next Saturday. Brought to you by Master Video. First and 10 now. Ball State at the Central 49. The Cardinals with a four-point lead. And here's Bernie Parmalee. Finally brought down at the 39 of Central. That should be a first down. David Johnson, the free safety on the tackle. Two things here, Jim. Ball State wants to keep the ball on the ground here again as we watch Parmalee gain some good yardage here. Good blocking up front. Keep the ball on the ground. Stay in bounds. Use time off the clock. Get in position for at least a field goal, uh, if not six points and a touchdown to put it out of reach. There you see over the 100-yard mark now, Bernie Parmalee. And it is a first down. First and 10 now for Ball State. I got a great question here. Ball State's got a four point lead. Let's just say they get a field goal. Central Michigan comes back, gets the touchdown. Do you go for the tie or do you go for the win? You like to put gray hairs on the coaches, don't you? I always go for the win. But then again, if I was in first place, I'd go for the tie today. 7.28 remaining. First and 10. Ball stayed at the Central 39. Bernie Pummel. <laughs> he leaned right against an offensive lineman. That's a new one. Instead of following the block, he just almost grabbed on to him. Yeah, it was like a piggyback ride here. He's about tired of doing all that work. Watch it here now. Pummelie just goes into the blocking scheme and just, just, <laughs> leans, just leans over there. Nice right. ride, nice ride by Brian Outlaw. Brian was probably trying to figure out, who is this on my back? <laughs> Under seven minutes to play. Second down, six. Ball just across the 35. Parmalee. To about the 32-yard line, George Rickhamstrick. And Scott Alferink, the nose guard, on the tackle. Now, not only are they keeping the ball on the ground, Jim, they're using all of that 25-second clock up, too. They were down to one second before they snapped the ball on that last play. As the clock is down to 6.20. This is a B, third and three. You have the ball at the central 32. Remember, Stucker made a 49-yard field goal that was canceled later. Ball State scored a touchdown, so we can't kick long distance, but the wind is the factor. Finally, first down, leans to about the 27. Big third down conversion. David Johnson finally brought him down. Well, there was a case where the defensive line really shot off the ball, and Parmalee just waited until they got past him and ran for the extra yardage. Now, it's interesting. Stevens will come back into the lineup. This would be the time I'd throw a pass. Right now, first and 10, go for it. 
Because you may have the linebackers in tight. Jones in motion. Hammond split to the top of your picture. Instead, they're going to give it to Stevens. Follows his block nicely down the sideline. Out of bounds at the 20. James Williams, the cornerback, in on the stop. The linebackers were in tight. He turned it up to the outside. I know he wanted to stay in bounds, but again, they're still moving the ball quite well. And the pressure is now on Central Michigan's defense to stop him here. You notice how they like to counter a lot? First step one way, then go the other. They've done that all afternoon. Mark Stevens only okay, with uh, seven receptions, no touchdowns at eight yards on the day. <laughs> State by four. Here's Stevens to about the 16 yard line. And that should be another first down, and it is for Ball State. They are killing the clock and perhaps Central's chances. Well, we knew these two teams could light up a scoreboard, Greg, but remember, they're each facing two terrific defenses, and they've really done well today. They certainly have. Got to credit, I think, the offensive game plans on both parts. The difference is Ball State came up with some clutch defensive plays and maybe a little luck. Stevens try to go to the outside, and a great play by Craig Allen. One-handed him to bring him down. And the clock down to 440 and counting. Well, every MAC conference game has been decided by 10 or more points up to this point. However, today may be the exception to all these numbers. So you have, now get this, the average margin of victory in a 1988 MAC game is 18.7 points per game. I guess that means when you get on a roll, you really go. Ball at the 17. Second down, they're calling it 11. Bernie Connolly back in. And he is tripped up. Rich Curtis. One of the inside linebackers tripped him up. All right, Mr. Brinda, you can play great Karnak, if you will, here. Make your call. <laughs> well, it's third down and 11. I'm going to throw the ball, but I'm not going to throw it towards the sidelines. I'm going to try for something up the middle. And even if I don't get it, the clock's going to continue to run. And we'll take the field goal and let uh, Central Michigan worry about scoring a touchdown. Interesting. Bren Baker and Parmel. I think they'll run it this time. Riley rolling. Looking for Sean Jones in the corner. Throws it to Jones. He's got it. But he appears to be shy of the first down. He had to come back a little bit to avoid a possible interception. Well, they're very close to a first down, but I, I, I got to believe that they're going to take some easy points and go for the field goal here. Let's watch it again. And they will. Jones didn't have any choice but to come back because the play took so long. But again, the clock continues to run, and now we're under three minutes. The ball will be spotted on the far hash mark. This will be a 24-yarder. Shannon Griffin, the sophomore, is the backup holder. Pressure here, Ball State by four. Here we go. It's up. And good. So, with 2.44 left in the game, Ball State increases their lead to the magic number of seven. And the Heat's on Central. Here it is, and here's the kick. Look at that right there, Kenny Stucker. Yeah! All right. Two of two for a freshman. He gets great height on that ball, Jim. He does not kick it low, and it's really tough to block those on him. Here we go. Gino Marchetti brought it up to the 25-yard line, and so 75 yards away, Central takes over. Two minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the ball game. Ball State 27, Central 20. Well, if they score the touchdown, you say they go for the extra point and go for the tie, because then they avoid a loss. And still the only unbeaten team in the MAC. There's the story again. Five minutes. The clock. That's right, five minutes off the clock on that last drive by Ball State. Each kicker, two for two today in field goals. Here's Bender all night, going for the home run to Reed. He caught the ball at 
the 45 of all state. How about that first down? That should be over 200 yards today. Well over 200 for Jeff Bender. Now Mike Cruz was guarding against the deep play and I think he just turned around too late on this. Good pass and Cruz on coverage here, just a little behind. And Bender with all night, Greg. First and 10 for the Ball State 45. Here's Darnell runs up the middle, cuts back to the right. Charles Kelly can't get him. He'll be brought down at the 15. We have 2.13 left in the ball game. But Ellen Cruz saved the TD. Well, that's called making up a lot of yards in very, very short time. 2.13 left in the game. 27-20, Ball State. But Central has the ball after that big play by Darnell Rush. Gain of 30. First down at the Ball State 15. Bender wants some more. Throws it. Intercepted by Todd Fennell. And he kills the central drive. What a play by Fennell, who plays it perfect. Well, this is a pass that you better read right or you're going to get killed. And he didn't. Todd Fennell just stepping in front of the receiver. In front of Jack Carruthers for the interception. And boy, oh boy, I think, I think, Jim, CMU just got a little greedy there. Well, Bender looked right at him and Fennell with the perfect, perfect read. And now... I think we're going to have some extra yardage as a personal foul happened on the sideline out of frustration. Bad enough that they would have gotten the ball. Now, we have 153 remaining. They have a personal foul. But CMU, according to our reports, has only three timeouts. Has all three timeouts remaining. They may have to use them here and stop Ball State. Well, that's what they're going to have to do, Jim. They're going to have to start using the timeouts now after every play and hope to get the ball back. Ball stay at their own 43 after the interception by Todd Fennell. Second of the day, Greg Garnica got the other one. He set up a touchdown for Bernie Parmalee. Here is Parmalee. Near first down, but shy by a couple of yards. They'll move it back a little bit. Rickham Street in on the tackle. Time out, Central Michigan. 145 remaining. Well, the other thing here, they take the time out, and all Ball State has to do is get another first down, and it's over. Each team came in today at 5-1 overall, 3-0 Central in the back, and Ball State at 4-1. Now remember, Central next week travels to Western. Western's playing Eastern tonight, so we have this round-robin situation. Who knows what will happen by next week? Well, defensively here now, defensively now, Central Michigan has to strip the ball away, Jim. they got to go for the ball. They need to get it back because it's obvious that unless they can stop Ball State, they're going to get another first down, and the clock will mean absolutely nothing at that point. Well, here's what the coaches have told you. In these situations, Paul Shadell has said, hang on to the ball. Hang on to the ball. Two hands on the ball now. On the other side, you work on stripping the ball so often, and now you got to see which of the two comes true. Well, I'll tell you, everybody holding their breath around here with 145 remaining. Ball State lost last week at home to Eastern Michigan. Normally lost to Rich Curtis was right there. Timeout Central. And as you see, 140 remains. Remember, Ball State up 27 to 20 here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Okay, big play coming up, third down and four yards to go. They have one more timeout remaining, so it's also a big play for Ball State because if Central Michigan stops them here without Ball State getting the first down, Ball State's gonna have to give up the ball. So here's the story, third and call it five. I'll tell you, the guy right now who is saying prayers, left, right, center, is Donnie Mullins. He does not want to have to come on because if so, he's going to have to take about one and a half or two steps to just get it away. And executive producer of Mass Video Productions is Val Kim. Producer 
George Williams, Steve Warren, our wonderful director, John LaChance, associate producer, technical director, Tom Farmer. And there's the rest of our crew, Barry, Steve, and company. Master Video would like to thank some very special people who, through their collective efforts, have made this broadcast possible. From Ball State, Don Purvis, the athletic director, Dick Falls, associate AD, Earl Yestingsmeyer, the sports information director, and John Ginner, associate SID. 140 remaining. Here's the play of the game. Third and five. Ball State at their own 48. They have to cross the 47. Tripped up by Alpha Rink, the nose guard, last time out by Central, and only used five seconds. Scott Alpha Rink made the play behind the line of scrimmage here. Watch it as Alpha Rink gets great penetration, slows him up, trips him up, makes the tackle, and now Ball State has to give up the ball. With a minute 35 remaining, Central Michigan will take possession, but they will have no timeouts. Also, quickly, let's thank from Central Michigan, Dave Kleitz, Director of Athletics, Walt Schneider, Associate AD, Fred Stabley, Sports Information Director, and his assistant, Rob Kaminsky, and Gene McClain. Greg, what do you do? You go for the block or you set up the return for Kelvin Floyd? Well, I think you try to go for the block uh, and you hope you don't knock him down. And you leave, I think you leave your return man on his own if you don't get the block. 135 remains in the game. Ball State 27, Central 20. Punting situation for Donnie Mullins. Kevin Floyd back deep. Here comes the rush and they got it off. Floyd at his 15 to the 20. 55. The out of bounds at the 26. So Central Michigan is 74 yards away. As you can see, with 124 left. Well, Jeff Bender, who had thrown a lot of passes prior to this game, threw a lot of passes already, Jim, and now uh, he's going to be called upon to lead this team 75 yards and about a minute and a half by the passing game. They line up in the eye, perhaps for some protection for Bender. Bender with some time. But Derek Westfield got him from behind. Clock remains running. <laughs> Great coverage downfield by Ball State. Ball is now at the 22. Central with no timeouts. They've got to get this playoff. One minute remains. 22, here's the pass. Incomplete. He wanted Hopkins to tie it in. So that'll bring up third and call it 15. And Central Michigan with their hearts in their throats right now. 78 yards away. Well, on that first play, Jim, he really had a lot of time to throw the ball. Protection broke down, but he had a lot of time. The coverage was just excellent on the uh, part of Ball State. 56 seconds, that's it. Third and 15. <laughs> Central in its own 22, Bender. Little time, deep, Hopkins can't hang on. Defensive play of the day by Charles Kelly. Well, Hopkins was in position to make the big catch in midfield. Kelly came in with a big hit. It was right to Hopkins, and Kelly, who's only 5'9", took on the 6'2", 235 pounder and just took his legs right out from underneath, and Hopkins went flying on his back. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Jim, uh, credit Bender with a, a great throw here. Watch the deep zone, see the deep zone. They're not letting anything go long. Hopkins gets in between the short coverage and the coverage. Look at that play, oh man. The ball was right there, though. There's nothing you can do about that. Either hold on or you drop it. Well, it was a Hopkins, he fell. Kind of hard to see how he fell. He may have fallen on his hip that time. Lower part of the back. Remember, you're landing on artificial turf, which takes its toll in and of itself. And that leaves 50 seconds left, and more importantly, it is fourth, and oh, they're calling it 14 up here. Last gasp for Central from their own 22. 
Double wide left. Bender fires. Stockford. He won't get the first down, and Paul State has it with 43 seconds remaining. And unless they fumble, that's it. Now credit to the coverage by Ball State here in the last few plays, Jim. It's pretty tough throwing against a deep zone when they know you have to make 14 yards for the first down. So now it's just cover up the ball and let the clock run out. Ball State has a fine trip back to Muncie, Indiana. Isn't it interesting, Eastern was in a must-win situation with one loss. They go to Muncie last week, they beat Ball State. Ball State in a must-win comes here. And they're going to beat Central at home unless they fumble. 27-20 with 43 seconds remaining. David Riley went down to his knee. Says, here, Mr. Fischl, have the ball. And no timeouts, of course, for Central. One more play, and that'll do it. Well, we've seen a great game today, Jim. This has really been a fabulous MAC contest. And again, credit Ball State. They just came up with more big plays, both offensively and defensively, when they've had to. Big interception there. Uh, in the last series by Central Michigan. And let's remember, pending the outcome of the Eastern-Western game, everybody now in the MAC has at least one loss, including Western, Eastern, Ohio, U, Ball State, and Central. <laughs> now we know why race. Paul Shudell had the head on. He just got dumped with a bucket of Gatorade. He stole it from Bob Costas, I believe. <laughs> or was it Bill Parcells? And the final score, Ball State comes into Mount Pleasant and knocks off Central Michigan. It's only their fifth loss over the last few seasons. The final 27-20, Ball State defeats Central Michigan. We're a good luck charm for Ball State. Uh, they are now 3-0 on the MAC game of the week, and John Lachance has Coach Paul Shudell. John? All right, Coach, here we stand again. Three TV games with Ball State. Three times you come away a winner. Well, I tell you, it's, uh, I can't say enough. It was just a hell of a game, and... Both sides played well, and you know, you, you you play football, you know, to have moments like this, you know, and it's just something these kids have never experienced, and uh, I just, I'm just so happy for them, it's, it's just great, you know, and give credit to Central, it was just, it was a great game, I, and I love to be involved in these and against a classy outfit like Central. Not to take anything away from you, and not to take anything away from this victory, where does this leave Ball State now in the match? First place. I know first place, but with your perspective, where are you looking at from here? Western Michigan, that's the next week. All right. It's one, it's how many down and one to go. All right. Congratulations on this one. Best of luck to you. And we'll talk with you a little bit later. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Jim? All right. Thank you, John. What a great game this was. 27-20, the final. And keep in mind, Central Michigan has, still has quite a few games to go. Four left. So this is by no means uh, hurts them. But as John Wagner, the SID at Kent said a few weeks ago, now everybody's used one chip. Well, that definitely is true now. Uh, uh, Jim, but I'll tell you one thing, you got to credit Ball State with some uh, great play calling and, and a fine defensive effort. They came up late in the game, but you know, you got to be impressed the way Bender threw the ball today. I think it was totally unexpected that he would throw the ball as much, and he threw it with a lot of success. And hey, by no means is Central Michigan down and out right now. Every, everybody has a great shot at this, and, and we talked about parity at the beginning of the year, and I think we're back to where uh, a lot of teams have a chance to win the MAC championship. Oh, that is happiness supreme. David Riley, Eugene Riley, Parmalee are excellent. Well, again, we saw a great, great football game this afternoon from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And, Jim, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week's contest. Be sure to join us next Saturday at 12.30 as the MAC Game of the Week travels to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Western Michigan plays host to Central. The MAC Game of the Week is a presentation of Master Video Productions. Once again, the final score, Ball State 27, Central Michigan 20. For Greg Brenda and John Lachance, I'm Jim Isabella. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs>